Hello and welcome to uh, a reading from the uh, Vision and the Voice and commentaries. The tenth aether, which is probably the, one of the most unusual of all of the thirty aethers that uh, Crowley scried in his uh, uh, Enochian initiatory journey. And we uh, picked up yesterday where uh, he and Victor Newberg were doing sort of a, a, a dual uh, operation. Uh, Victor, as the scribe, sat inside the circle. And Crowley, we think, was in the triangle itself, giving material basis for the demon Corone Zone, the mighty demon of dispersion that uh, uh, is and is not uh, the demon of dispersion within the, the area of the Tree of Life we commonly call the, the abyss. And it's a strange character because it is something that is actually is not. It's a thing. It's not even a thing. It is not isness who talks a lot. As a matter of fact, in one of the footnotes, I'm going to read it uh, first. And I'm going to read the footnote in, in two different ways because there are so many parentheticals in it that it's kind of hard to, to uh, uh, follow the, the straightforward meaning. When I said it is, uh, is notness, here's what he says. Various elements have been bound up into a bundle by the energy of the call, or the call itself, Madriastias, Prof. Zax, Kismi Kalosinirka Ozgo, that's the call itself, and the experience of the, of the vision. Various elements have been bound up into a bundle by the energy of the call, and thus constituted a momentary unity capable of sensation and of expression. The obsessing idea of any such being, conscious that it is not a true organism and threatened with immediate dissolution, which in its rudimentary psychology is bound to dread, is of necessity fear, and fear breeds pain, malice, and envy. Above all, there is an insane hatred for the supposed creator because of the supposed blessing of creation has been withheld from the bundle. Now, if we take away the parentheticals, various elements have been bound up into a bundle by the energy of the call and thus constituted a momentary unity capable of sensation and of expression. So it seems like you're talking to an objective demon of some kind with, with consciousness and sense of self, but you're not, okay? It's not even that. Oh, but I digress. Various elements have been bound up into a bundle by the energy of the call and thus constituted a moment, momentary unity capable of sensation and expression. The obsessing idea of any such being, conscious that it is not a true organism is of necessity fear. And fear breeds pain, malice, and envy. Above all, there is an insane hatred for the supposed creator because of the supposed blessing of creation has been withheld from the bundle. Now, an example of that hatred is almost the opening lines of the vision itself. 
I am the master of form, and from me all forms proceed. I am I. I have shut myself off from the th spendthrifts. My gold is safe in my treasure chamber, and I have made every living thing my concubine, and none shall touch them save only I. And yet I am scorched even while I shiver in the wind. He hateth me and tormenteth me. He would have stolen me from myself, but I shut myself up and mock him, even as he plagueth me. From me come leprosy and pox and plague and cancer and cholera and the falling sickness. Why, I reach up to the knees of the Most High and tear his phallus with my teeth. I will bray his testicles in a mortar and make poison thereof. I will slay the sons of men. The obsessing idea of any such being, conscious that it is not a true organism, and threatened with immediate dissolution, which in its rudimentary psychology is bound up to dread, is of necessity fear, and fear brings pain, malice, envy, and above all, there's an insane hatred for the supposed creator. There's that. Okay. That being said, I'm going to pick up the narrative. Remember, Victor is the scribe. Crowley, supposedly concealed in an unknown place, is probably in the triangle itself, covered with a cloth. He's called the seer. Victor, scribe. Crowley, seer. Now, Caron's on is so wild and crazy, sometimes within the same sentence, the seer and the scribe and Coronzone are all talking at once. Okay. Here's where we picked off yesterday. Here the spirit simulated the voice of Frater P, or Crowley, Perdurabo which also appeared to come from his station and not from the triangle. I don't think I can get any more. I think that's all there is. That's where we left off yesterday. The frater was seated in a secret place covered completely by a black robe in the position called the thunderbolt. He did not move or speak during the ceremony. Next, the scribe was hallucinated, believing that before him was a beautiful courtesan whom he previously had loved in Paris. Now she wooed him with soft words and glances, but he knew these things for delusions of the devil, and he would not leave the circle. The demon then laughed wildly. Upon the scribe, Threatening him, the demon proceeded after a short delay. Remember, Victor had vowed to, to uh, repel any attacks with the dagger. They have called me the god of laughter, and I laugh when I will slay. And they have thought that I could not smile, but I smile upon whom I would seduce. O oh, inviolable one! Thou canst not be tempted. And there's a footnote here that uh, he assumed the character of the courtesan, who was a marvelous mistress of irony and of fascination, and that intrudes upon the demon proper. So, O oh, inviolable one, that cannot be tempted. If thou canst command me by the power of the Most High, know that I did indeed tempt thee, and it repenteth me. I bow myself humbly before the great and terrible names whereby thou hast conjured it and constrained me. This is the demon talking. But thy name is mercy, and I cry aloud for pardon. Let me come and put my head beneath thy feet, that I may serve thee. 
For thou commandest me to obedience in the holy names. I cannot swerve therefrom. For their first whispering is greater than the noise of all my tempests. Bid me therefore unto thee upon my hands and knees that I may adore thee and partake of thy for forbidness, or excuse me, forgiveness. Is not thy mercy infinite? Here Caronzon attempts to seduce the scribe by appealing to his pride. But the scribe refuses to be tempted and commanded the demon to continue with the aether. There was again a short delay. Caronzon hath no form because he is the maker of all form. And so rapidly he changeth from one to the other, as best he may think fit to seduce those whom he hateth, servants of the Most High. Thus taketh he the form of a beautiful woman, or of a wise and holy man, or of a serpent that writheth upon the earth ready to sting, Footnote, he actually assumed these forms at the time. And because he is himself, therefore, he is no self. The terror of darkness and the blindness of night and the deafness of the adder and the tastelessness of stale and stagnant water and the black fire of hatred and the udders of the cat of slime. Not one thing but many things. Yet with all that his torment is eternal. The sun burns him as he writhes naked upon the sands of hell, and the winds cut him bitterly to the bone, a harsh dry wind so that he is sore athirst. Give me, give unto me, I pray thee, one drop of water from the pure springs of paradise, that I may quench my thirst. The scribe refused. So this is whatever or whomever is in the triangle is saying, gee, I'm thirsty. Get, Victor, give me a little something to drink here, okay? We're in the Sahara Desert. Give me something to drink here. Let's... A pause that refreshes. Sprinkle water on my head. I, I can hardly go on. The last was spoken from the triangle in the natural voice of the frater, which Caronzon again simulated. But he did not succeed in taking the frater's form, which was absurd. The scribe resisted the appeal to his pity and conjured the demon to proceed by the names of the Most High. Caronzon attempted to seduce the faithfulness of the scribe. A long soliloquy ensued. The scribe cursed him by the holy names of God and the powers of the pentagram. I feed upon the names of the Most High. I churn them in my jaws and void them from my fundament. I fear not the power of the pentagram, for I am the master of the triangle. My name is 333, and that is thrice one. Okay, Caronzone enumerates, the letters enumerate to 333, and 30, 333 is 3 times 111, and 111 is Aleph, or 1, A-L-P, 111, so thrice 1. My name is 333, and that is thrice 1. Be vigilant, therefore, I warn thee that I am about to deceive thee. I will say words that thou wilt take to be the aether, 
and thou wilt write them down, thinking them to be great secrets of magic power, and they will only be my jesting with thee. Here the scribe invoked angels, and the holy guardian angel of Frater P. The demon replied, I know the name of the angel of thee and thy brother P. And all thy dealings with him are but a cloak for thy filthy sorceries. Here the scribe averred that he knew more than the demon, and so feared him not, and ordered the demon to proceed. Thou canst tell me not that I know not, for in me all is knowledge. Now knowledge is another, it's the Kabbalistic name for da'ath, the sephira, non-sephira in the midst of the abyss. For in me is all knowledge. Knowledge is my name, and not the head of the great head is excuse me is not the head of the great serpent arisen into knowledge. Okay, that uh, the golden dawn has has uh, two images of Eden before the fall and Eden after the fall. And Eden after the fall, uh, doth is literally. Uh, uh, created from uh, uh, a heretofore more pristine. Well, imagine if uh, existence in its pure potentiality is uh, a tree of life of just nine sephira, nine sephiroth, uh, three triads, three, three, three. Perfect, like the Chinese just love the perfection of nine but but that is existence uh, uh, existing in absolute pure potentiality there is no manifestation there is no malkuth there is no number 10 but that's eden before the fall and eden after the fall would be would be like if a divine proctologist reached up and grabbed one of the central uh Sephira in the middle and popped it down, flipping the second two uh, 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 triads and creating the material universe, creating number 10. But it creates a vacuum, if you will, a new non Sephira uh, called Da'ath in the center, where the second triad and third triad flipped. Uh, and it creates that vacuum, and in that vacuum, the head of the serpent, okay, uh, literally the serpent that creates the potentiality of the, the manifest microcosm, puts its head right up into this uh, da'ath, knowledge. Not that knowledge is bad, but it ain't the whole circus. Thou canst not tell me not that I know not, for in me all is knowledge. Knowledge is my name. Is not the head of the great serpent arisen unto knowledge? Here the scribe again commanded Coronzon to continue with the call. I, excuse me, know thou that there is no cry in the tenth aether like unto the other cries, for Coronzon is dispersion, and cannot fix his mind upon any one thing for any length of time. Thou canst master him in argument. O talkative one, one thou hast commanded, wast thou not to talk to Coronzon? I'll say that again. Thou canst master him in argument, O talkative one. Thou wast commanded, wast thou not, to talk to Coronzon? He sought not to enter the circle or to leave the triangle, yet thou didst prate all these things. 
Here the scribe threatened the demon with anger and pain and hell, and the demon replied, Thinkest thou, O fool, that there is any anger and any pain that I am not, or any hell, but this my spirit? Images, 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 all without control, all without reason. The malice of Coronzone is not the malice of a being, it is the quality of malice. Because he that boasted himself, I am I, hath in truth no self. And all these that are fallen under my power, the slaves of the blind one that boasted himself to be the enlightened one, for there is no center, nay, nothing but dispersion. Woe, 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 threefold to him that is led away by talk, O oh, talkative one. <laughs> and that's where we're going to end today. Wow. My brother was uh, uh, a disciple of Radhaswami uh, Charan Singh of the the Sant Mat cult, if you you will, uh, and they had sort of a version of the in their doctrine anyway. They had sort of a version of Karanzo that they called Kal. K-A-L, who was uh, the, the master of uh, illusion, that existence itself, in a sense, was, was the play of, of Call, the master of uh, delusion. And uh, Constance pointed out today that uh, that was also similar to uh, uh, the kind of the final demon that approached uh, uh, the Buddha uh, just before the Great Awakening as he sat under the, the Bodhi tree. So this, this idea of, uh, of Corona Zone or the, the, the great weaver of, of illusion and the demon of di uh, d dispersion, as uh, talked about in uh, the vision and the voice, or the Enochian aethers, or the, the tree of life, is not something that is totally unique in the, the Western Hermetic Kabbalistic. Uh, Enochian systems of uh, of uh, viewing the universe. So, one more thing I'll add is uh, during my very first LSD ex experience, as it was coming on big time, I was completely alone, but I was talking to myself. I was talking to myself so fast and the thoughts tumbled over each other in a, in a wild confusion of log illogical logic that sped up to such a speed and I was trying so much to clutch on and and hold on to the thread of thought in this inner inner dialogue that it became I couldn't hold on to it with my meat brain anymore and letting go of that surrendering to the fact that no the meat brain part of me is is holding me back from something 
absolutely, absolutely a, a different form of consciousness. That in a sense, I'm not saying that that was a crossing of Lawn's Abyss or anything like that, but it showed me a pre-echo of what that of what that was. Anyway, tomorrow we'll probably finish up the, the tenth aether and uh, Corona Zone, the demon of talk, 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 talk. Until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself, be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love's the law, love under will.